sign on the sign says to hit a phone company. But I know that can't be right, because they took out my phone last month. I wonder if someone listening in on me. And I wonder who's watching the man who's watching me. I wonder who's watching the man who's watching the man who's watching me. We seem to be living in the era of the spy. Sometimes when bunglers are involved, it's downright funny. But more often, it's dangerous. Probably most Americans believe that without a court order, telephone bugging is illegal. Unfortunately, they're wrong. The law that protects us from this kind of surveillance has a big loophole in it. This loophole permits employers to bug millions of conversations each day without the knowledge or consent of those on the line. Any employee who works with telephones or computers is subject to this kind of secret bugging. That means customer service representatives, government workers, telephone operators, hotel reservation clerks, potentially 15 million workers, all people you might speak to every day. And the bugging is not limited to them. It's also monitoring hundreds of thousands of phone calls of customers, citizens, uh, calling the phone company for service or calling airlines for reservations, calling the whole, involving essentially the whole service industry and its relations with uh, the American public. The jobs done by these workers are high stress jobs. They are fast paced and relentless. And the fact that at any moment their conversation might be secretly listened in on or even recorded adds immensely to the stress already present. And rather than being a method of constructive review, this bugging often leads to harassment. Hi, may I help you? When we're monitored on, we never get our feedback right away. You know, they might wait until the end of the day or three or four hours later, and by that time, we might have handled three or 400 calls. We don't need to have anybody standing over us with a stick. I would do an even better job if I were treated as an individual, as a human being rather than, than part of a machine. The best way to get effective work from people is to tell them what needs to be done and then get out of their way and let them do it. Uh, give them scope, give them some room to work together, uh, to come up with new ideas, um, and to uh, use their own initiative. And all the studies have shown that that's exactly how you get the best work. Until you've had to answer calls in 19 seconds with people that are incoherent, um, I, I really can't make you understand how, how stressful that can be. And then to see your supervisor disappear with her clipboard. Yeah. Oh my God, has she gone to the back room to listen to me? Corporations claim they need monitoring to ensure quality. But time and time again, this has proven to be false. Morton Barr, president of the Communications Workers of America, cites two cases where bugging was stopped and productivity went up. But both AT&T and the CMP company of West Virginia, rather than put a beep tone on the monitored call, decided not to monitor at all. And lo and behold, they found that service quality actually went up. United States Senator Paul Simon and Congressman Don Edwards have introduced a bill which would help eliminate the invasion of public and employee privacy rights that results from secret monitoring. To close this loophole, I have introduced H.R. 1950, which would require an audible tone when employers listen in on employee telephone conversations. This bill would not limit an employer's ability to monitor conversation for service quality, nor would it interfere with wiretaps for law enforcement purposes. It would merely require notice to employees that they are being monitored. We just want to protect the American people from another encroachment on their basic liberty.